All right, and a pleasant good evening uh, to you and yours, and welcome to Commodore Stadium, where tonight, oh, we got ourselves a little bit of a tiny football game with not much on the line, right? Nah, just kidding. Of course, we are live from Commodore Stadium, where tonight, tonight, the 3S Region 3 District Championship will be decided between the Rockledge Raiders and the O'Galley Commodores. Good evening, everybody. I'm Alan Slaughterzinski. Tonight's game is brought to you by Richie's Auto Tech, home of the Million Mile Warranty, P2K Services, and JT Andrews Remodeling and Building. Well, what we have here tonight, to quote Paul Newman, is not a failure to communicate, but a lot of communicating going to go on here tonight. So let me help set this situation up for everybody here tonight. And don't you know, What's at stake? Because there's a lot on the line here tonight. Let's first take a look at the district implications here tonight. The O'Galley Commodores come in ranked number two. They're number 15 in the state, and they have 15.685 points in that district. Now, that's critical, and I'll ask you to remember that as we continue to talk about this. The Rockledge Raiders are ranked third in the region. They have moved all the way up from seventh to third with their Massive wins over Satellite and Merritt Island to jump into that third spot. Now, a lot of people may be under the assumption that a win by Rockledge tonight would catapult them to the second spot. Not necessarily so. That's a lot of points to make up. Now, don't ask me how to explain what that point system is. I can simply tell you what it is um, in terms of the actual points themselves. But the Raiders tonight, they're not going to they, – they win the district. They may jump up to the number two seed, or they may not. We'll see how the FHSAA rankings come out uh, a little bit later on in the week. So that's all that's on the line tonight is a higher seed uh, for the playoffs and a district championship. Now, these two teams uh, are about as equal as you can get when you – Look at the leaders when you look across the board at these two teams. They're both very defensive squads. The Rockledge defense comes in 18 sacks, five interceptions, seven fumble recoveries. Uh, O'Galley comes in uh, 18 sacks, 12 interceptions, 15 fumble recoveries. The Raiders are a plus 10 in turnover differential. The Commodores are a plus 17. So there are a lot of similarities between these two teams. Where they have separated over the last couple of weeks is offensively. And what can you say about the play of quarterback Traven Green? Green has been absolutely phenomenal uh, with nine touchdowns uh, over the last couple of weeks. Green has thrown for eight, and he's run for one. So there's no doubt that Traven Green has once again found that rhythm that eluded him earlier this season as the color guard takes the field for the national anthem here. All right, let's get back to talking about the similarities and the differences between these two teams. Defensively, these two teams are as good as they come. 
in Brevard County. As I stated, Rockledge a plus 10 in turnover differential, and the uh, O'Galley Commodores are a plus 17. Both of these teams really have a successful uh, formula for a, a decent playoff run, in my opinion. If you can run the football and play great defense, there are a lot of positive things that can happen for you come playoff time. The Raiders come in averaging 125 yards a game on the ground. O'Galley, a lot better at a 185 a game. They've got two of the best whacks in Brevard County, no doubt about it, when you're talking about uh, Latavius Welch. Um and Delvante Williams back there. Uh, in terms of passing yards per game, uh, Green comes in averaging about 80 yards a game, and Jamari Crooms at about a buck 14. Total yards a game, yep, 205 and 300, respectively. Uh, in terms of points per game, Rockledge 14.3, O'Galley 26. Point eight, but now you've got to consider and take into account the tough schedule the Raiders have played this year. They've played some of the toughest teams, not just here in the state of Florida, but they played a very highly national ranked Duncanville, Texas team as well. The problem is I don't believe that that strength of schedule has helped the Raiders very much in terms of the FHSAA rankings as the captains get set to take the field 2010-0, and I believe that's one for O'Galley. That's Brandon Brown, Josh Robertson. Also out there is Latavius Welch, if it is one, and Emmanuel Small, also the captain. I can't see the Raiders. I do see Traven Green out there at the midfield. It is number, looks like number seven. If it's number seven, it's Delvante Williams. So those are your captains as the two teams get set to take the field. The Commodores tonight, they'll be in all red. They'll be in all red with the gold trim. The Raiders are in what I guess you would call a Columbia blue-grayish. Uh, tonight with the classic R on their helmet. Uh, let's talk a little bit about both of these head football coaches. Wayne Younger, currently the longest consecutive tenured head coach in Brevard County. That's right. Uh, Wayne Younger has done a heck of a job. Nine years, Coach Younger, 63 and 32 uh, in his nine-year tenure. Chris Sands, not too far behind him. Six years, Coach Sands, 40 and 20 calling the offense uh well there are a lot of coaches on the Rockledge Josh Woods Jake Williams uh Rashad A. Myers T.J. Montgomery Brian Hepburn Tyrone Jiscom, the defensive coordinator Taylor Carter Dwayne Carter Tony Brown Terry Allen and for the O'Galley Commodore C. Fat Jackson Polk playing Kelly Benninger B.J. Ross, uh, Manny LaRee, strength and conditioning, uh, Rob Robbins also as well, Jack Gallo, Danian Alvarez, Marquise Ramos, Coach Guy. And I run in my mouth, I missed the toss. Well, speaking of toss, let's tell you about tonight's officials. Gary England in the white hat tonight, Michael Barella, uh, Randy Detweiler, Gary Cook, uh, Greg Slentz, Billy Damalia, and Rick Scott out there on the field with Coach England tonight as the Commodores get set to take the field here in their all red. Glad you could be with me tonight. And there's a glance there at uh, Coach Younger again. Coach Younger in his nice, hard to believe, it's been nine years already, and it's hard to believe he is the elder statesman in the county. Now, obviously, Dan Burke came out of retirement. But when you're talking consecutive years of tenure, that title belongs to Wayne Younger, 63 and 32. And again, you see Coach Sands on the left, 40 and 20 in his six years. And the Commodores have had a very successful run under Coach Sands. And let's talk about these two quarterbacks tonight. There's Jamari Crooms there on your screen. And, of course, uh, for Traven Green up. Uh, I don't see Traven's picture, but Traven Green, the quarterback for Rockledge. The Raiders take the field, and they are ready to go. Keep your eye on Jalen Hayward tonight. The UCF commit. A lot of uh, talented, athletic D1 players between these two teams on the field. Chavez, Sandman, Thompson, the Oregon commit. So we got a lot of them out there tonight as we 
get set to go here live from Commodore Stadium. Great to be with you here once again as we get ready to go. One of the impact players tonight. My, I got two key players in this game tonight. I'm going to continue to say Traven Green. You see, well, Allen, that's not really going above and beyond anything. He's the quarterback. Well, Green has been on fire lately, and it's going to be up to this Commodore defense to cool him off. And for the O'Galley Commodores, I'm going to pick the six or the 15-year-old X-Man, Xavier Larice tonight. Got to have a big night in that secondary tonight as the Commodores will receive. Back deep, it looks like it's going to be number 11 back there. It's going to be the aforementioned X-Man Xavier Lloris. And number one, Latavius Welch. Set to kick off here for Rockledge. He's going to be number 19, Jerry Valdez. Valdez set to go. Quarter number one just about to get underway. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Valdez ready to put toe to leather. And we are ready, set, fire. Short kick. Going to bounce at the 20. Picked up by Larice. Larice immediately absolutely drilled on the play. And the trash talk starts. That's Jalen Hayward who takes a look over to the O'Galley sideline, bobbles the head, and exits stage left. And we'll get a look at that O'Galley Commodore offense coming up here in just a moment. They take the field. It'll be Jamari Crooms, the quarterback, with Latavius Welch. D.L. Hardison at wide receiver. In the slot, number 18, is Makai Biggs. And split wide right here is Terrell Robinson, the junior. Wide left, I should say. It's going to be a four wide receiver set with the back in the backfield being Welch. Crooms, man in motion, stops. Crooms turns, gives the Welch. Welch tries to get outside. Mistake. Right out of the gate, that's a mistake. The one thing you're not going to be able to do on this Rockledge defense is run east and west. You are going to have to try to pound this football team between the tackles if you're going to have any success. They got too much speed, and there you see Jalen Hayward coming off of that side. They immediately go after Hayward. I like, I, I don't know, I, I don't know what you would call it, but I, I like the opportunity to try it. You tried it, it didn't work. That's going to be the outcome all night should you try to run east and west on this defense. Welch comes in with 761 rushing yards and eight touchdowns this year. He is the leading rusher in Brevard County. Second and 10 for Crooms and the O'Galley defense, or the O'Galley offense, sorry. This time, tries to get in. Oh, nice run there, good cut inside, out. And he's going to pick, that's solid. He comes inside and then comes outside. And that's an outstanding run there by Welch. And he's going to pick up nine and a half yards. It's going to be third down and about a foot now for that Commodore offense. Raiders in a four down front. The end here, closest to the cameras to Quay McFadden, a 6 2 senior. And the Raiders will switch it up. That's a 4 2. They're running right now with a nickel set, turns, gives, and boom! What a hit inside. I don't know that he got there. And another UCF commit. With a big hit there. He only had about a half a foot to go. So a, a pick up there. But another UCF commit in DJ McCormick. DJ has simply been one of the best defensive players in Brevard County throughout the length of his high school career. And it's first and ten for O'Galley. And the ball will be at the 35. The Commodores have not registered a W over Rockledge since 2008. And they're not alone. 
Rockledge is 36 and 7 in Brevard County since 2017. Turns. Oh my goodness gracious. Blowing that up was JJ Silverzon. And JJ comes in and destroys that play, and it's first or second and 14 now. Second and 13, we'll call it. Crooms gets the play. He's got to hurry here because they're running short on time. One thing O'Galley cannot do is get flustered. Interestingly, Sandman Thompson has moved on that line. He is usually the center of the Oregon committee. He is not the center there tonight. Where guard is, he's at guard. And another big hit. Oh, he's still on his feet, but still a great hit there. That time the tackle made by Lorenzo Bell. And Bell comes in with a big stick, and he forces third and 11 for this O'Galley offense. And this is, this is the game plan for O'Galley tonight. Take your time, work that play clock. Want to say hello to Coco City Councilman and Vice Mayor, or Deputy Mayor, I believe, Alex Goins. Watching here tonight on BSN, third and 11. And Kroom's going to throw for the first time. He gets outside. He's got to get rid of it. He does. Down the field, he's got a receiver. And that's going to be a 15-yard pass interference penalty. That's a good flag by Billy Demalia, And that'll be a 15-yard penalty. The DB never turned. The receiver was open. It was a good throw by Crooms, And that'll be 15 yards to Rockledge. Defense commits the first mistake of the game, and that'll put the football at about the Raider 48. Actually, that puts the football. How, how, how is that a 15-yard penalty? That can't be right. That, that's, a, that's way too far. Way too far. It's 15 yards. It's 15 yards from the line of scrimmage, so the ball should be placed at about the 48 or 49-yard line. They're putting the ball where the foul occurred. Wow. Okay, now he's going to mark off 15 yards. Okay. Good, good pick up there. I got to give O'Galley credit. They tried, so the ball will be exactly at the 49. Coco up seven to nothing. 49, first and 10 at the Rockledge 49. It's a good looking pass from Crooms. He is, turns, gives. It'll be a solid gain up the gut, still on his feet, great run. By Emmanuel Small, Small with a big run. And it'll be a second and a short four for the Commodores. Already nine minutes to play in the first quarter. And so far, this is picture perfect execution of what this Commodore game plan should have been coming in. Take your time, run the ball, keep their offense off the field. The caveat to that is you've got to put the ball either through the uprights or in the end zone here. So it's second down and four for Crooms. Whistles. And are we going to get a delay? Dead ball, delay a game. That's the other caveat. So that'll back them up. So it'll be second and eight now for O'Galley. They were facing a third in about ten and a half. On the last set of downs, Rockledge with five down linemen. Turns, gives straight up the gut. Nothing fancy. Raiders shut it down after a gain of four. Four times three is 12, but this will bring up third down. 
inside on the stop there, number 17, Zane Humpke, the senior linebacker. So now it'll be third and four again. Check it out for O'Galley is Robert Hugger. So I, I would think, I don't know if this is four down territory or not. Third down and four. Crooms from the pistol. Oh, nice throw. Nice job. Good play fake and a nice pass and a catch. Hauled in by D.L. Hardison. Hardison with his 13th reception of the season. And that is more than enough for an O'Galley first down. First and 10 ball at the Rockledge 30. 7.34 to play here in the first quarter. Want to say hello to Diane Landry watching from Massachusetts. Tracy Morgan says go Commodores. Jordan Sibley and everybody else. Uh, Alex Goins and everybody else watching here tonight on Brevard Sports Network. First and 10 now. Coming up tomorrow to be the ECC Championships as well as FHSAA Class 5A Regional Semifinal Volleyball. First and 10. Crooms, turns, gives. Straight up the middle. And Emmanuel Small picks up another four, and it should be second and six for O'Galley. And this drive is chewing up a lot of time. Number 50 in the middle here, Amir Parker. Checking into the football game for O'Galley is Dawson Barbaro, wide receiver. The leading pass catcher on the Commodores is Hardison. Five guys are in triple digits in receiving yards this year. Whistle, and that's going to be another delay a game penalty. Now, I'll say this. They may have been good enough to overcompensate on that last time, but they can't keep doing this to themselves. Crooms is going to have to have more of a sense of urgency here. I get it. You don't want to. You don't, you know, you, you, you want to stick with the game plan and chew time off of that clock, but. You also don't want to keep hurting yourself with five-yard penalties. We'll see if that penalty comes into play or not for O'Galley. I think now it is for sure, for sure, four-down territory. So the Commodores will have two downs to pick up roughly seven yards. Actually, they did not call a penalty. I believe they walked it off there because they called a timeout, looks like, didn't they? Okay, so O'Galley saves themselves with a timeout there. My apologies. Running my mouth, not paying attention. If you know me, that's, that's a habit. My old school teachers will tell you that. Quick pitch here. Oh, what a pitch. What a run. Nice play. Good lead block and Welch. Picks up a first down for O'Galley. And they are now inside the Rich's Auto Tech red zone here. Great first down run. Great pitch, great block. And that was a nice job on AP out there. I'll tell you one of the best coaching pickups of the offseason this year was Justin Warden for O'Galley. Coach Warden is on the Commodore staff, and it was that's just a great pickup. Crooms turns, gives the big back this time, still on his feet. Actually, that was Welch again. I apologize. And he's close to a first down. And I think the thing that's awfully impressive about this O'Galley offensive line is no holding, he actually stepped out of bounds. So it'll be second and about four now for
7-0 Merritt Island thanks to Gary Ward giving us a score update there. Second down and yes, in field goal territory and in four down range as well. So whatever Coach Sands, Coach Guy wants to do, turns, gives, shimmies and shakes, and he'll be absolutely drilled to the turf that time by a Rockledge defense that's been out there a long time. And off the pile comes J.J. Silvers on for his second tackle. 5-19 to play in the first quarter. 5-19 to go in quarter number one. Third down and two for O'Galley. They've got three wide receivers. They're all split. Oh, come on, is it? And no, I was going to say, can't be another. And a great job by Coach Jiscom and Coach Younger to call a timeout. With a timeout on the field, we'll step aside. No score. Commodore's driving. Opening drive, first quarter. Coming up after the game tonight, it'll be the Uber Zotti Post Game Show, live from the Brevard Sports Network Studios in beautiful downtown Melbourne. Coming up, we'll recap all the games and take a look at the current playoff standings where if you just go by the top eight in each region right now, Brevard sitting on 10 or 11 teams in that playoff race. Third down and two for Crooms. Back in the backfield is Small, Emmanuel Small, Small straight up the gut. Did he get it? I believe he does. First and goal for the Commodores. So a first down by O'Galley. That's Xavier Larice. Now, you saw him come in jet sweep motion. They didn't give it to him. They gave it to Small. Let's see if they get a lot of field. On that right side, let's see if Xavier Larice gets the ball this time. And he was getting it. And it's going to be a false start on O'Galley. You can read it as plain as day. Larice was getting that football. Yeah, that, that, that's pretty, man. That red on red. We'll say hello to Deterius King, Anthony Session. Man, can you believe that we are all ready? 4.30 to go in the first quarter. 4.30 to play in the first quarter. Rockledge has yet to have the football. This has been all and, and – O'Galley's just controlled this drive. Started at about their own 30, 35. This is methodical. The, the issue here is you've got to finish. You've got to finish this if you're the Commodores. It would be a tremendous boost for this team if they could do that. But that Rockledge defense is going to have something to say about it. They actually stacked this uh, offense the same formation Flip the sides here, and this is Larice to give. They fake it again. Block outside, around the corner. Did he get in? No, they say he's out, out at the two-yard line. So out at the two. This crowd was anticipating that. Pull Sandman Thompson from his guard position and punch it in here. Crooms in the pistol. He's just going to give straight up. Does he get in? I think he does. I think he does. 
I think he does. Touchdown, Commodores. What a drive. Heck of a drive by O'Galley. And that was scored by Latavius Welch. That drive took nearly eight minutes off the clock. The extra point by a near some snap hold whistles. So how do you say his last name? Yamir Samo the kicker. <laughs> that's a long last name. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. And that's against Rockledge. So that'll move the ball up. I don't, I don't think I didn't kick the, the field goal here. But it does move the ball up, and it does give the coaches something to think about as Yanir Semayoa, I believe is how it's pronounced, gets set to kick here. What are they doing? The referee's having a conversation with them. There must be a lot of talking going on out there. So probably some warnings being issued, telling them, chill out, cool down, let's play some good football. These are two well-coached teams, two outstanding programs. Not be silly. We got... Another offsides on. So they're going to go for this now. They're going to go for two here. I like the call. I think you get in behind the big Oregon commit, Chavez Thompson, and you just lean forward for two points here. Rockledge has shot themselves in the foot with two offsides. Nowhere to go but north and south here. Give it a shot. I don't like the shotgun. And that's why. Great play. Great. Does he get in? He does. Oh, my goodness. How did he get out of that? He does get out of that. What a play fake by Mari Crooms. Fooled me. Fooled everybody. And Crooms keeps it. And gets in. Wow, what a play. What a play. O'Galley with one of the longest and best drives of the year gets in the end zone here. With 4-12 to play. And they lead this 8 to nothing. What a fake by Crooms. And now we'll see the kicker. And now we'll see the Rockledge offense as well. Little pooch kick. What a run back. Little pooch kid, and there's a flag flying in. That's going to be a hold. Now, if that is a hold, just no reason for it to happen. If it is. Yep. So it's a 10-yard penalty. So to back the Raiders up, and Traven Green will step on, and what a week. Traven Green, two weeks Traven Green has had. He is our reigning American Air and Plumbing Florida Tough Cool Zone Player of the Week. Four more touchdowns last week, followed up by a five-touchdown performance the week before. And aside from the Coco Tigers, 
And a game or two against Merritt Island. Green has run roughshod over Brevard County, including these Commodores. Green, first and 10. Quick pitch out. Good run, outstanding run. You'll take that all day long. And that's the junior running back, Jalen Bradley. Number 24 on that carry, nice pitch by Green. It's gonna be a two wide receiver set with an H back. And this time straight, oh, this time the Commodores eat it alive. And he'll go backwards. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide on that one. Big number 72 in on that stop. That's Sandman Thompson, the Oregon commit. Joseph Balmain cheering from Boston tonight. Third and five quickly. Two fifty-five to play. Green wants it, has it, looks to throw. Plenty of time, rolls out, throws. Oh, great execution. And they say no. Hayward's toe tip, toe tap touch on the far sideline is no good. And the Raiders are going to be forced to punt, or are they? Yes, indeed they are. And the Raiders, after what can only be described as one of the lengthiest drives I think I've ever seen in high school football, will be followed by a Rockledge three and out. And O'Galley will get the football immediately back. And if they're not careful here, Xavier Larice will run this thing back into the end zone. I want to say hello to Chris Bonanno watching. Of course, make sure to give Chris a follow on his outstanding weather page, Space Coast Weather. Nobody, nobody covers the weather better than Chris Bonanno. He also does a great job at sports, if I could ever get him back in the booth. And Larice is going to let this just take, oh, that's a nice punt. So an outstanding punt. It's only going to be 38 yards net-net, but the bottom line is, uh, it was a good punt. 2.33 to go in the opening quarter, and O'Galley will get the football back here with an 8-0 lead after forcing a three and out. Save your fingers. You don't have to ask me the time or the score. The score is at the top, and I'll give the time about every 90 seconds to a minute, minute and a half or so. So 2.33 to go. And back out on it is Jamari Crooms. Crooms did an outstanding. That, that was what that was. Crooms was a true field general in that opening drive, and this is going nowhere, absolutely nowhere. And again, that Rockledge defense, when you run east and west on them, will stop it all day. And that's Jalen Hayward again inside there to make the stop. The UCF commit. And the problem. is that speed, and I like what O'Galley was doing before, inside out, inside out. You can get to the outside, but you need to do it from the inside against this defense. Jaquay McFadden on the outside, there's number zero in your screen as well. We got doubles, that's wide receivers, not quite split equally to each side. Crooms, second in about 16, looks to throw, he does. Ah, you saw that coming, and that, not sure, that's just a great hit. Glad they did not throw a flag on that. That's just an outstanding hit. I was waiting to see if they would. They did not, and that's just, that's, pick, that's textbook, textbook. Number six, Damari Jenkins, the senior, just absolutely leveled a hit that could be heard all the way up Wickham Road. Third and about 19 now for Crooms. I don't know if you throw the ball here. I don't know if you put yourself in that position. One minute to play here 
in the, th the first quarter. One minute to play. And they don't. Now, I like that play call. Straight up the gut. It'll be fourth and about 11. Now, Rockledge has potentially flipped the football field. That's a big stand by their defense there. As the Commodores will come on to punt. I guess you got to keep trying it sometimes. Maybe seal a block off. I just don't know why you keep running at Hayward. If you want to run east or west, that's certainly... Not the direction I would go. That's a good punt. And that ball will get out right at the 50. So this green is actually going to pick up about 15 yards of field possession here. As the Raiders went three and out on their first stop, on their first possession, as the Commodores... Shut them down. Let's see what, if anything, they do here differently with Coach Younger. Nine seconds now left in the first quarter. Obviously a great crowd on hand here tonight. The winner of this game is your district champ. We'll talk about that because just because you win a district, it doesn't guarantee a home playoff game. But in the case of these two, I'm pretty sure they'll play at home. First and 10, ball dead on the 50. Turns, gives to Hayward. Hayward inside. He's stuffed. And inside first on the scene was Rayshon Berry. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter as the – O'Galley Commodores, who are looking for their first win over the Raiders since 2008, lead the first quarter 8-0. There you see our Cool Zone football, Florida Tough Player of the Month. That's going to be Traven Green this past week for the performance he had last Friday night. We'll announce that tonight. And then next week we'll announce the player of the game or player of the, the week for this week. And the player of the month for October. And the player of the month from October gets a $50 gift certificate and a plaque. Our player of the month last month for the month of September was Coco Tiger wide receiver, Javen Boggs. I want to thank Rich Is Auto Tech for sponsoring that first quarter. Second, or actually it should be first down, I think. Right? Oh, what a stick. Big stick, great coverage. And the excitement, that is second down. And to start the second quarter is no different than ending the first. Turn around, young man, so you can get your glory. Emmanuel Small with the big hit. So it's third down and 15 now for the Raiders, who cannot get anything going, at least in their first seven plays. The wide receiver split wide near side is Jamarcus Jiskum. Larice was up on him. Two freshmen, or sophomore and a freshman, I should say. Green back to throw. Gets rid of it. Open. Caught. Touch down. Rockledge Raiders. Picture perfect strike from Green to Bell. And it's eight to six. What a throw. What a catch. Great route. And the Raiders are within two. Green stepped up beautifully in the pocket and let a missile go. And Bell was in stride with it. That is a 55-yard touchdown. And the big play capability that Traven Green has shown in the last two weeks continues. 
That was just one-on-one -on -one coverage. Green went through a progression of reads on that. He went, he looked short, looked short twice, and then went long with it. He had all kinds of time. Great job by that Raider line. And here comes the extra point to snap the hold. The kick is up, and it's good. And with 10.59 to play in the first half, the Raiders wake up with a 55-yard touchdown pass from Traven Green to Lorenzo Bell, Jr. And they pulled it within a, a point. Boy, when, when Traven Green's on, he is tough to stop. And the Commodores now will get the football back here with uh, Manny Larice. I'm sorry, Xavier Larice. I knew I was going to call him his dad at one point in time tonight. Xavier Larice and Latavius Welch back deep here. Chip shot, out of bounds, and that'll put the ball at the 40-yard line. And that's where the Commodores will take over. And as Alex Goins had mentioned earlier, and we mentioned in our pregame, we really felt like this offense tonight was going to come down to the big playmaking ability of Traven Green, and there you saw it. Just an, an outstanding throw. Now, the Commodores, what, what an interesting tale of two different types of scores. The Raiders go big strike and O'Galley methodical. Still plenty of time left in this one. We'll see which one works out better. I want to thank P2K Hydraulic Services. You see the information on the bottom of the screen there. Crooms looks, oh, that was nearly, and it is picked off. That was tip, tip drill. You can tell the Raiders been working on a tip drill as D.J. McCormick, the linebacker, comes up with the interception, and the UCF commit gets the ball right back for his football team. For the Rockledge Raiders, that is their sixth interception of the year. And they are now plus 11 in turnover differential. And the ball will be exactly where it was when they started their last drive. Dead on the 50. Great job by McCormick on the tip drill there. Made sure he hauled it in. Didn't try to run with it before he had it. And it pays dividends. Crooms, though, threw that ball into quadruple coverage across the middle of the field there. And here comes Green and the offense. The back in the backfield with him is Jalen Bradley. J uh, Green will now jump back in the shotgun pistol, whatever you want to call it. Fakes it. Green looks. Oh, he's going deep again. Did he? An incomplete, but a flag is down. And yes, indeed, he was on him closer than Superman's cape, a little too close. And that's going to be pass interference. I think he got all kinds of contact with that right hand on the belt there. And that'll go against Caleb Pusey. And that'll be a 15-yard penalty. And the Raiders will have first and 10 at the 35. So Wayne Younger pretty confident right now in what Traven Green is doing out there on the field. Throwing the football, they go right back to it. And I, I like the aggressive nature of the play call. Trips wide right. Green puts the ball in the belly this time. 
of his running back who carries defenders for a gain of about five. Nice run by Jalen Bradley, but a flag is down. We'll see what Gary England has to say, and he's going to say it's a hold. So, well, the good news is if you're watching and you don't know this by now, holding used to be a spot foul in high school football. So, in other words, if that hold occurred three or four yards behind the line of scrimmage, they would walk the football back ten yards from the spot of the foul. That's not the case anymore. It's just a 10-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, and I think that's one of the great rule changes that didn't get talked about enough at the beginning of the year. I think it's ridiculous to have had to put teams in first and 28 situations. First and 20 now for Granny Turns. He gives to his back, and he's gone nowhere as a whole host of Commodores led by Rayshon Berry make the stop. And 10-21 to play here in the first half. And it's 8-7. to seven. Somebody asked me for my final prediction earlier today. A friend of mine texted me and asked me what I thought the final score would be. And I said 18-14, 18-17, somewhere in that neighborhood. Flags fly before the play even goes, and let's see what Gary England whistles here. Dead ball, false start. Look, I, you know, I'm not picking on Rocklands, but this has been an issue all year. Penalties have absolutely been an issue that has shot this team in the foot. And the closer we get to the playoffs, I don't know how you clean it up this time of the year, but they got to be more disciplined. You can't give the other team these types of yards. Second now and 25. Dave Clark says, watch the post. O'Galley right now looks like they're in a 3-3. Three, three. And hit Green, Dave Clark might be right, but Green doesn't have that time. Throws. That's caught. Nice catch. Still on his feet. Is it enough? for a Raider first down. That's just a great throw on the run by Green. Who's the receiver on that? I apologize, I did not get the number, but that was a great play. Third and one, and it is four down territory for sure for Rockledge. And they turn and give, and that's a Raider first down for sure. As Jalen Bradley picks it up, and the sticks will move with nine minutes on the dot to play before halftime. Bradley and Green in the backfield. Trips bunched closely to the left side of the offensive line. Green takes a look over. He's going to give to Bradley. And Bradley will pick up about six yards. It'll be second and four. It's a good run. Well, they stay giving five, so it's second and five now for Rockledge, who looking to take the lead here. Field goal or a touchdown will give the Raiders a lead. This is Hayward. Hayward sneaks inside, still on his feet. Nice run by Jalen Hayward. And AP is close to a first down. If he doesn't have it, he's just a hair short. And it is a first down inside the P2K red zone.
The one thing that neither of these teams have really done all that well this year, sack the quarterback. Now, Rockledge has 18 sacks, but when you're, when you're high sack numbers in high school are somewhere in the mid to upper 20s. And this is Hayward again. He tries to get outside, but he won't this time. And that's just a good stop by O'Galley that time. And they needed a momentum. That's Josh Robertson on that tackle there. And it'll be second down. And actually lost a yard, yard and a half. But did Merritt Island 14 nothing on satellite. Did, did you say Melbourne 7, Vieira nothing? Vieira 7, Melbourne nothing. Second and 11 here. Green looks to throw. He's in trouble. Rolls right, rolls right, and just dumps it away. Good play by Traven. Just didn't try to force anything in the red zone and lives to play another down. 6.31 to play in the first half, and that'll bring up third down and 11. That's the thing my coach used to preach to me constantly. Slaughter Zinski, just give us another shot at another down. If it's not there, get rid of it. And by getting rid of it, I don't mean to get rid of it. Throw it to the next county. Third and 11. Nobody in the backfield. A five wide receiver set. Green looks, draws, throws, and that's incomplete down at the goal line. And that'll be fourth and 11. And if the kicker, and I don't know, but if they've got a kicker, now's a good time to try a field goal here. And they exactly will do that. And that's a good hold by that O'Galley defense following the turnover. Now, Rockledge has, in big situations this year, missed a couple of key field goals. The ball is going to be spotted at the 21 on the right hash mark. So this will make this a 31-yard field goal. He's going to have to come from right to left. The wind, I can't see a flag. Snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it is a butte. And Rojas with the kick, I believe. And with... 6.22 to play in the first half. The score is Rockledge 10, O'Galley 8.
All right, sorry about that. A little audio issue there. If Crooms is running, if uh, Izzy Montanez isn't a oh, sideline warning, that can't be a warning. They're marking it back. That was just a, a tremendous open field tackle because Crooms would still be running. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, he may have even got into the red zone or scored here. What a break here on the field with 430. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm sorry I was dealing with uh, an audio issue there for a couple of minutes. Got it fixed, though. Uh, but coming up after the uh, game tonight, uh, make sure you join us for the Uberzotti post-game show where we will not only run down the scoreboard tonight, but we're going to take a very detailed look at the playoff picture heading into week 11. And I'm not putting down any of my competitors, but I, nobody can break this down like we can break this down. I promise you. So make sure you check us out tonight. Make sure you check us out. 4.30 to go in the second quarter. It's 10-8. Oh, I can't! I can't have fruit in my drinks, man. I, it's, I, you know, uh, it's, it's got to be straight. Just saying, that's just me, but I can't put fruit in my drinks. Second and twenty-five. Now that was a fifteen-yard penalty. That was a sideline, not just a warning. <laughs> they got it. Crooms from the gun. Oh, that's a good give. Oh, you got to. And I tell you, he doesn't make too many mistakes, but the mistake Latavius Welch made on that play was he had it. He cuts back and turns north. He goes right by the end there. Didn't do it. And as a result, he had two guys force him to the sidelines. But that's much easier said than done from my standpoint. I'm sitting in the press box watching this. But just like that play he had a couple of plays ago when he stopped on a dime and turned north, that probably would have given him a very similar result there. Third down and about 19 or 20. Crooms, oh, he's going to throw this deep. He's got a receiver. Caught! What a throw! What a catch! Jamari Crooms to Terrell Robinson. 53 yards, and it's first and go to go for the Commodores. What a throw. Equally as impressive as the one green made to Lorenzo Bell. Crooms finds Terrell Robinson, and it's first and goal at the five. What a play. What a play. O'Galley showing quick strike capability there. 3.53. Nice run. Ball's out. But it goes out of bounds. It's out of bounds. Yeah, so uh, got to protect that football. Got to protect that ball. Ball will be spotted at about the two now, I believe. Second and goal inside the P2K red zone. 3.27 to play. Checking in for O'Galley is big number 66, Kenta Williams, the 6'2", 300-pound guard. Crooms inside. Touchdown, O'Galley Commodores, Xavier Lloris, and with 3.08 to play, O'Galley has reclaimed the lead. 14 to 10. X 
Man with a touchdown. I tell you what, this is not even his best sport. He is one heck of a baseball player. I was blessed to call, I believe, what was his first ever high school home run. And he hit it a ton. I mean a ton. Excessive celebration for O'Galley. That'll be assessed on the kickoff. Got a little, had a little fun. Nothing excessive about what they did. That all set up by the big 55-yard pass from Jamari Crooms to Terrell Robinson. And with 3.08 to go, it's 14 to 10 O'Galley. That was weird. For some reason that was declined. Oh, they're gonna, okay. I don't know what they were doing. I've never seen that kind of motion on a kick. D.L. Hardison, the holder. Snapped, good, kick, blocked. And that's on the kicker, he kicked it low, but with 3.08 to play in the first half, the Commodores on a two-yard touchdown run by Xavier Larice have taken a 14-10 lead. All right, I remember to turn the microphone back on that time, coming out of break. That's what my technical difficulty was. You know, I like to be honest with you all. I just never turned the microphone back on. <laughs> Nikki B says three in one game. Yeah, I had a great story about that one. The day before, he had hit three doubles off the top of the wall, came home from school the next day, worked on his swing, and then jacked three over the wall the next day. That is what you get in the X-Man. 308. Back deep. Can't see the numbers. Here. But they ain't going to him either. This is Jiskum. He is fast. Jiskum on his feet still. Look at Jiskum run. Jiskum could go all the way. Jiskum at the 20. 15, 10, 5, and... Touchdown, Rockledge Raiders. A 65-yard kick return touchdown by Jamarcus Jiskum. And the super freshman puts the Raiders right back on top. No flags. What a run by Jiskum. Wrong guy to kick it to. Really any of those guys back there the wrong guy to kick it to, but you got to kick it to somebody. I'd like to say hello to Jim Williams, Super Coco Tiger fan. Jim, welcome. And just want to say thank you. Tonight is, until we get to the playoffs anyway, our final regular season. Coco Tiger broadcast and Valdez boots the kick through and in the blink of an eye just as they had done before the Rockledge Raiders reclaim the lead 16 to 14. Got us a game here. Yeah, I know, Thomas here. Calling me out on my predictions. But I think, I, I don't know, man. I was just saying real quick, looks like 
Looks like it could be one of those 31, 30 type games. I'd love to see this a high scoring game, but with defense making big plays. It's a great first half. I mean, just a great first half. We've seen all kind of football, right? I mean, we've seen the methodical offense, the big play offense, the big play special teams there by Jamarcus Jiskum. And no, everybody afraid to kick, and Valdez boots it out of bounds again. That's the third or fourth straight kick he's booted out of bounds tonight. Third. Coming up at halftime, I'm going to unplug the microphone. I'm going to charge it. I'm going to leave it on and pray nobody in the press box cusses. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I'm taking a chance. I'm taking a chance, I know. But I'm going to, I'm going to, and I'll, I'll remember that on uh, Melbourne Coffee. <laughs> and with 2.53 to go, Crooms, who has shown his big play, Capability. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll fix that in a second. Give me one second. Underneath and caught. My apologies here. Thank you for the heads up. That's why I like an interactive broadcast, right? Because you can all call me out. I dig it. <laughs> Calling an illegal man downfield. I don't like the call. The ball was out and the guy was downfield. That's not a good call. 247, 17, 14, Rockledge on top. That's a five yard illegal man downfield penalty. <laughs> Marcus Ku Davis says, Well, damn, that was fast. Yeah, sure was. 2.33 to go. Crooms now. Not much success running east and west tonight against Rockledge, but, but really who does? Larice fakes the jet sweep, throws. Oh, that's nearly picked off again. It was picked off. Did he get that? Because if he got that, no, the referee comes flying in from the back. That's a great concentration play there, nearly with an interception. And that was the identical play that Crooms had picked off before by Derek McCormick, DJ McCormick, and it nearly turned out the same way. So you cannot throw that ball in the middle of four Raiders. I get it, but you can't, but you can't do it. Second and 15-16 here, the incomplete pass. Stops the clock. And Welch falls ahead for a gain of maybe two. And we got a whistle and a timeout. Good timeout by the Raiders with 2.03 to go. <laughs> Renzo Pratt. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, let's talk a little bit about these rankings. And I'm not talking about the best team in the park. I'm talking about the playoff rankings from the FHSAA. Um, you look at these playoff rankings and I'll tell you what, right now Brevard would have 10 teams that would go. In 1S, you got MCC and Holy Trinity. And I'll tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. MCC, because you only got four teams from each region that go. MCC, a legitimate shot to play in a regional final or even advance to a state championship in 1S. They really do. In 2S, currently, you have Coco, Titusville, and Palm Bay. So that's five teams. In 3S, you got four. You got Rockledge, you got O'Galley. You have um, Satellite and Merritt Island. So that's nine. And in 4S, you have Heritage and at the moment, Vieira. So check that, 11. 11, 11 of our 17 
football teams, 11-man football teams, would go to the playoffs. Crooms, protect the ball, protect it. And he does. He covers up. I tell you what, a lot of dancing back there, a lot of ball hanging down low, and that's a huge sack because uh, whatever they did in the secondary there, and I don't have any help tonight, so I can't see the secondary as I'm trying to make sure the camera. But that that's a covered sack through and through. But Crooms has got to get outside that pocket and run with that football. One fifty to go, and the sack backs him up to the 27. It's the first sack of the night for Rockledge, second sack of the night for Rockledge, and the 19th, 20th this season. They came in with 18 sacks, 20th this season. So Brevard County with 11 teams. What do you mean the camera ain't working? I'm watching. I'm watching on the iPad here. Huh? Are we good? Okay. Nice punt coverage. And your punt returner is Jordan Woods. And a big tackle there. Nice coverage by Eric Lugo. 14 nothing. Does that say Titusville was on top? Yeah, Titusville got a tricky little game next week. I think they'll win it, but it's a tricky game against Vieira. Great to see everybody on here tonight. Thank you for making Brevard Sports Network your choice for high school football. 138 Green has to work with. Let's see what he can do here. David says, working all the way up to Salisbury. Home of the Seagulls. Green. Oh, he's just going deep. And overthrows him. I like, the, I like the call. Take a shot as long as you don't get it picked off. But I like the call there. So to be second and ten, the incomplete pass will stop the clock. It's senior night here tonight. For O'Galley. And a nice ceremony by my man Cody Queen on the PA system prior to the game. Make sure you check out Cody's show on Facebook. What's it called exactly? Morning Melbourne. Oh, great play defensively. And they throw him down. And that's Jordan Woods that pays the price on that one. And that's in there to make that stop that time was Josh Robertson. Under a minute to go, and Rockledge really doesn't appear to be in a hurry here. We'll see what Green does if he tries to take another shot down the field. Why not send Hayward? There's Jiskum. Keep your eye here. He's going to look for the speedster, Jiskum. And Green is going to be sacked. And he'll be whistled down. And in there on the sack for the Commodores, Markel Goins. Markel Goins. Gowins. Way to go, Markel. Nice job. And two good sacks, one by Rockledge, one by... O'Galley, good, good plays. And now it'll be fourth and a trip back across 520 for a first down. So 
you got to be careful here. If you're Wayne Younger, if you're Tyrone Jiscom, if you're anybody standing with Dwayne Carter, whoever standing on that Rockledge sideline, you are telling your punter, kick that football away from the man standing at the 50. Number 20, Brandon Brown. Okay, Brandon Brown on that tackle. My apologies. Thank you. Let me get you up here spotting for me. Fourth, and let's just say forever. Lloris now standing at his own 45. And the Commodores with a shot here with 31 seconds. Low snap, and that's a bad punt. Trying to keep it away from Lloris. And you know what? O'Galley with a chance here. O'Galley with a chance. A chance to at least tie it. I like the game that both of these offensive coordinators have called in the first half. I really do. All right, Crooms is going to have Delvonte Williams to his left. He's going to have double split equally to each side. In motion. Now he's got three wide receivers to the left. Crooms, no pressure. He's got to get rid of it. He's, Jamari's got to run. And that's just a bad play by Jamari. Crooms balls out, but he's down. That's not a good play by Jamari, and I think he knows it. And that'll run out the first half. And that that play right there, if you if you look at the wide receivers, all of them came out, and they're going to try. That's just not going to work. That's the end of the first half. Flag goes down. That'll end the first half. That's, that comes with experience. You, you, you learn that with experience, but you've got to throw that football there. He does not. Mari's a junior, so... Talk to him at halftime, get it fixed, because you don't know if you're going to need that situation again in the second half. But a really good first half, nonetheless, by both of these teams, Grooms and Traven Green as well. We go to the half with the score, Rockledge on top, 17-14. All right, the O'Galley Marching Band presented by me. Let me get the corner changed to the third so I don't forget to do that. All right, go grab yourself a beverage. Come on back here to Brevard Sports Network and check out the second half or hang around to watch one of the best marching bands in Brevard County. Keep off your field, the leader regiment. I wanted to say hello. How are you, Katrina? Are you? Very nice I've to been you. traveling and out of country and military and been watching you for years and I've been messaging. I sincerely appreciate everything that you guys do. Oh my goodness, to it is finally nice to meet you. <laughs> I always meet you, Thomas. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. That's awesome.
drum major Kyle Brown. He may be in your show.
students walking to the field, the Oak Alley High School Marching Commodore. begin your show.
Looks like we got us a game here going into the final 24. But before we do that, how about a big, if you're sitting at home in your living room, just start clapping. Everybody, I think you're weird, but give a big round of applause to these bands who did an outstanding job at halftime. I hope you can hear them okay. But just a great job by both Rockledge and O'Galley. T.J. Fluker said, no offense to the band, but where the football? Antonio, you with this longer than the Super Bowl halftime show. <laughs> Cruel. Cruel. <laughs> <laughs> But honest, but honest, you can't, you cannot, you cannot fault honesty. All right, we get set to go here. 12 minutes on the clock as uh, O'Galley will come out. Great first half. And all kinds of football we saw there. We saw long drives, big plays, special teams plays. What will have to hold, and can the Commodores snap a 15-year losing streak to the Columbia Blue and Red? We'll find out in the next 24 game clock minutes. And set to kick off is number 40 for O'Galley. He ain't here. Someone, I want to apologize to referee uh, Gary England. I was calling him Greg the whole first half and well that's not going to work as Rockledge will have outstanding field position to start the second half here. I'll be calling him Gary. His name is Greg, right? Uh, oh, did I go backwards with it? Okay, I went see that? I went backwards with it again. So I'll be calling him uh, Gary, his name is Greg, so I apologize, Mr. England. <laughs> I want to thank Mr. Scott, right? I want to thank Mr. Scott for keeping me straight on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? <laughs> MCOA, a great organization. Of course, I had the great pleasure to MC the Hall of Fame banquet the last two years, and Steve Muzzy and company absolutely love working with the MCOA. 11.55 here, first play of half. Number two here as Green has five wide receivers to open the second half. Nobody in the backfield. Green drops back. He's got time. He rolls right. He throws wide open on the far side of the field. Is the man with the big connection earlier tonight, Lorenzo Bell Jr. He'll pick up 11. And a Raider first down. We've got an injured Commodore, and that'll stop the clock here with 11.48 to go in the third. Two coaches, Chris Sands and Wayne Younger. Coach Younger now the elder statesman of the Brevard County high school head coaching bunch, and what I mean by that is uh, nine consecutive years on the job with Rockledge. That's longer than any other coach. Dan Burke had 22, retired in 2019, came back this year. So Wayne Younger assumes that. He is uh, 63 and 32. And, of course, Chris Sands has done a fantastic job here at O'Galley in his sixth year. Coach Sands is 40 and 20. What would that 41st win mean to Coach Sands? And of course, we've been talking about Rockledge, and the injured player is up. And not only is he up, but he sprints off. That's Markel. Markel Goins, and back down he goes. Hope he's okay. He gave it a shot there. 35-14, Coco. Nice job by Paul Bay to put 14 on the board. Gowans gave it a shot there. I don't. We'll keep. We will keep our eyes open for his return. He's got the lone Commodore sack in this game tonight. So 
he gets after the quarterback pretty good. I thought that time Green took off a little too prematurely. I think he needed to step up in the pocket and throw the football down the field that time. But who am I? Green has had a phenomenal last two weeks. Again, five wide receivers, little wide receiver screen pass to Hayward, and they will stop Hayward in his tracks. And they tackle him quickly. Zero on zero. Emmanuel Small on AP there. And it's now second down at about 13, 14, we'll call it. Nice play by Small. The problem on that one was Jalen didn't have any blockers in front. No help. So Jiskum will line up wide left, wide right. I can't see the number. Again, a five wide receiver set for Younger in his offense. Green wants it, has it. He's going to keep it. and That's a good, good call. And he's going to pick up. Maybe close to 10. It should be third and about four now. And that's about what it is. Third and four for the Raiders here. 10-33 to play in the third quarter. 17-14. Rockledge on top. A rather subdued crowd considering what's at hand here, both sides, really. A lot on the line here tonight. Third and four, four down territory. Green drops, throws, oh, nice out. Caught, hauled in. And he's gonna be short, but it stays on his feet. And he's gonna be rocked again. That's just a good, solid play right there by Jordan Woods from the Raiders. And he should have the first down, and he does. And that ball is getting close to the Richie's Auto Tech red zone. Vieira 14, Melbourne 7. Merritt Island 24-7 over Satellite. 30, it's 35-14, 35-14. Thirty-five, fourteen, Coco over Palm Bay. First and ten, Green gives. Why not give it to? Ball's out. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't. I thought it was. But Rayshon Berry makes the stop. No gain, says the official. Jordan Woods again on the carry, and it'll be second and ten. Rockledge, boy, it would be huge if they could put this ball in the end zone. They'd give them a 10-9 point, pending the extra point lead. Sean Barry with a big stop. Ball is just outside. Check it, the Rich's Auto Tech red zone, home of the million mile warranty. Green with a back in the backfield, and he gives to Hayward. Hayward gets outside, nice. Great ankle tackle. That's a flag back there, number eight. Is Rayshon Berry again. Let's see what the flag is. It's thrown by. They're going to call a block in the back here. Yeah, you got to back them up on this. That'll be second down now and 20. That happened awfully fast. I'd love to see. I didn't see the block in the back, but that flag came quick. Coach Sands, I'm not sure what he's upset about, but. He's uh, out at the left hash, voicing his opinion to either his defense. Oh, they they declined it. Okay, they took the down instead. I don't know about that. So they declined the penalty and take the down. I might have had to push him back. Here I think they got a shot in field goal range. This is Green. Straight back, step up. He's going to roll right. Sandman almost had him, and Green will easily get near or have the Raider first down. Nice play by Traven. 
Should bring up. It's going to be fourth and short here. Let's see what Rockledge decides to do. Where did he step out? Oh, he stepped out way back at about the 14. So fourth and four now for the Raiders. And they're going to go for this, it looks like. Or maybe try to draw O'Galley off. The back in the backfield is Jalen Bradley. This is a big play by this O'Galley defense if they indeed they snap this football. Green wants it. He won't get it. They look over to the sidelines, and they may just, yeah, that's exactly what they tried to do was pull O'Galley off sides. And look, they very well, very well may come out of this timeout and try it again. With 8.55 to go, they may try to draw the Commodores, and this time snap it. Right now, the conversation in the huddle is, what's our best play? What is our best play? So we're about to find out what their best fourth and four play in the book is here, if indeed they snap this ball. Or they may just go for a field goal here. We're going to find out. You're like, all right, Alan, we got it. We're going to find out. Relax. Here they come. And no kicker. So this either all makes sense declining the penalty or we'll see. Whistle blows. Green's back out. The back in the backfield remains the same. And Bradley... And Green is now all alone. Green drops back. I don't know. Throws. That's a – oh, wow. I don't know about that call. That is not a good call. They're going to call that on Xavier Larice, and that's just great coverage. No, that's that's a – that's that's just – I'm 30 seconds behind, and that is not a good call. Not a good call. Be first and goal for the Raiders, though. So a big break here for Rockledge. Unless Larice was holding him, which I can't see. First and goal to go from about the eight for the Raiders. And Rockledge looking to take a 10-point lead. Nobody in the backfield. This looks like a quarterback draw all day. Nope. Throws. Wide open. Caught. Touchdown. Jalen Hayward. Sorry about that. Camera went up. And there's a flag down. This could be the makeup call here. As Hayward hauls it in over the Rich's Auto Tech sign. So my apologies on that. False start. That's a false start against Rockledge. Okay. So that'll back them up five yards and negate the touchdown. Gives me a chance to make up for it if the Raiders get back in the end zone. So now it'll be first and goal, and the ball will be at the 13. Sands accepts that penalty. Whatever happened right there defensively, they need to fix. Hayward, that was just a drop in the bucket from Green to Hayward for six points. Nobody in the backfield. There is an H back. Green's going to keep it. Green outside. Does he get in? No, he steps out of bounds at the five. So, they got another, another penalty. And this is going to be a hold. This will back him up 10 more yards. And the Raiders are self destructing in the red zone here. So now, 10 yards from the line of scrimmage will make it first and goal from the 22. And this is what plagued, has plagued Rockledge this year. This very scenario right here. P 
penalties in red zone situations. So it's first and goal from the 21 the ball is placed at. Green. Looking to throw a wide. Oh, he does. He just lets. Oh, this could be picked. And it is. And, oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. And the ball comes out of Larice's hands, and that is rare. And had a pick. Would have been his fourth of the year. And Larice just needs to shake it off. Needs to. The, the, you know, I don't know if anybody here has watched Ted Lasso, but he tells his players to be a goldfish as an animal. And that's what Larice needs to be here. He needs to forget about it. It's a good defensive play. They didn't score. Second and goal from the 21. Jalen Bradley in the backfield. Green going to throw again. Blitz off the edge. He gets outside. Nowhere to go, really, and he'll just be knocked out of bounds. Good play by the O'Galley defense to come up and stop Green from further penetration. And we got a little pushing and shoving in the end zone. Nothing worth showing. No penalties. Green throws a shoulder over there. I like the aggressive play. Protect yourself, young man. Big game next week, too. Speaking of that game, the barbecue bowl next week will be on Space Coast Daily. But we'll have all kinds of stuff all week, as we always do, honoring Rivalry Week here in Brevard County. Take a look back at the previous 15 barbecue bowls. Third and goal for Rockledge. Green looks. He's got room. He had a man out of bounds. He got, he found him, but he was out of bounds. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Good job by Green to get the ball to him. And way out of bounds was Taylor. The window is messing with me. So fourth and goal, and that will surely bring out the kicker. Rockley's looking to take a six-point lead here. Now, this ball will be spotted at the 20, so it'll be a 30-yard field goal. The wind, I finally found the flag. The wind, it flags at half staff. The wind is blowing from right to left. Flag at half staff, I believe, for the late, great Tim Wakefield. The kick is up, and it is no good. No good. It goes wide right, and the O'Galley defense Somehow comes out of that unscathed. And they will take over at the 20-yard line. Coco. Not a running clock yet, is it? Nope. Merritt Island and 24-24. And the Mustangs. And the Scorps tied up. That's a big game because I believe the winner of that game or the loser of that game might miss the playoffs. This is a good run by Welch. And Welch picks up eight, and it'll be second and one. Nine he picks up. I, believe, I don't think this district has sent in four teams to the playoffs. So I believe the loser of that Merritt Island satellite game could be on the outside looking in. Second and one. For Crooms, Welch, and company. And why not give it right back to him? Ride the bell, cow, And he has a first down. It's a gain of four. And the referee says, move those chains, move those chains, move those chains. Whew. Well, he didn't really say that, but you get the point. Pick six, Merritt Island, 24-22 over Satellite Beach. And somebody said 24-24. So I don't know who to believe here, Mr. Howard or Mr. Ward. First and 10 
at the 33. Crooms, again, up the gut, and the Raiders eat it alive. But Welch still does pick up two, second and eight. Delvonte Williams on the carry. The two-headed backfield of Welch and Williams with an outstanding season again. And they're both just juniors, and they'll both be back next year. Second down and eight. And again, it's Williams, and this time the Raiders again eat it alive as they clog the middle. And getting up off the bottom of the pile there is number 20 for Rockledge. That's Amari Okendo. So Okendo with a big stop inside. Uh, yet Daryl Durand is indeed, indeed doing the uh, Melbourne game. Third and eight. Crooms, little wide receiver out here, and that did had no chance because it just took too long to develop. And hauling it in is Makai Biggs. But shutting it down quickly was Jalen Hayward. And that'll bring up fourth down. And the Commodores will be forced to punt. Yes, at least I hope Daryl and Caleb are over at Vieira. Fourth and eight. Oh, they faked the punt. And look at this. A fake punt and a beautiful, what a call. It doesn't work. Oh, well, but it does. And that's a heck of a call and a conversion. Who caught that? Number two. That's what I thought. D.L. Hardison with a great catch. And they get the ball out across the 50 all the way down to the Rockledge 38. What a call. What a call. First and 10. It's a family show, or I'd tell you what kind of call I think it really was. Straight up the gut. And he just plows through the middle of the Rockledge defense there. Does Emmanuel Small. When I say I think, you know, it's one of those types of uh, calls. Love it. 446 to play in the third. What a fake punt call. That reminds me of like the onside kick in the Super Bowl that time by Peyton. And, you know, we've seen various fake punts in big situations like that before, trailing with the ball deep in your own territory, and you fake a punt. What a call. Second and one. Oh, nice cutback. Got to fight for that yard. Will he get it? Yes, he does. Forward progress. Will give him a first down. It should. See where the spot is. Nope. They say third down. They're going to mark the ball. Will they measure? Water break. Good time for a water break. Things are getting a little testy out there. 4.07 to play in the third. Uh, no, sir, we are, uh, uh, Paul, we are not doing the barbecue bowl next week. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't broadcast at Rockledge High School. And uh, so that will be over on uh, Space Coast Daily. They do a terrific job, so check it out over there. But we'll have four games for you next week aside from the barbecue bowl, but we'll preview it all week. I'm hoping one day uh, we can get back over there and broadcast some football. 4.07 to play. And 
And they give the Commodores the first down. I believe they got first and 10 at the 29 of the Raiders. Crooms, pump fakes. And he's going to be chased down and sacked. Third sack of the night. That one goes to Damari Jenkins, the senior outside linebacker. And that's a good job by Jenkins to get Crooms and a good job by Crooms to hang on to the football. 3.40 to go in the third. And O'Galley in no hurry here, but I would definitely think they faked the punt inside their own territory. This has definitely got to be four-down territory here. So if you're Crooms in this offense, you'd love to pick up the 14 yards needed, right? But Go get you seven or eight and then worry about the rest on fourth down. Now, again, if you can get the rest here, if you can get it all in one shot, go get it. But the mindset of having two downs to pick this up is, I think, where the O.C. is. And the give is up the middle. Nice bounce outside. And the Raiders cover that well, and I mean really well. Rockland's just got to be careful. You don't want to draw any extracurricular flags. It's 15 yards. No game. No gain. Third and 15. Checking in for O'Galley is Delvante Williams. I would. They have really liked that pass across the middle tonight. So. Third down here. Let's see. Three wide receivers to the near side. Two stacked on top of each other. Crooms. Oh, what a block. Throws. And that's just great coverage by Hayward. Hayward comes in at the very last minute and breaks that up. Great job by the UCF commit. And that will bring up fourth down. Now they got to pick it all up. We can do that. I, I, yeah, I got no problem doing that. I can do that for sure. Mr. Session, I'd love to do that. Fourth and 15 here and whistle. And I think the Commodores are going to talk about it. And they are. And with 2.07 to play in the third, this is arguably the play of the game. And there's an undisciplined play right there. And as D.L. Hardison throws. His helmet throws his gloves. He's got to calm down, man. I don't know what happened, but they don't need that kind of reaction. You don't want to put your team in, in a situation behind and walking around calming him down as Emmanuel Small. He's just got to stay disciplined. Now it's fourth down, and they don't have their best wide receiver out there. And he hurts your team. 207. Crooms with four wide receivers. Oh, he's going to quick kick. He's going to try to flip field here. And it goes into the end zone. So, almost worked, but the Raiders will take over at the 20. So, with 2.01 to go, I don't know I don't know what happened there. Absolutely. What happened there? But didn't end up well for, for O'Galley. Now they got to come up with a really big stand here with 2.01. And I love DL. I do. I really do. And that's, you know, those types of feelings. I can remember throwing my helmet at 17, 18 years old. I mean, if you played the sport, you played it competitively, and you played it at a level where your team was good and there was a lot at stake, you did things like that from time to time. I once got up, took a football, and fired it at a guy's midsection because I didn't like the way he tackled me. Picked up 15 yards, cost my team a big portion of the middle part of the game. So we all do dumb things, but you got to collect your composure. It's easier said than done in big games like this. 2-0-1 to go. Green. And that's a good run right there. It's going to pick up. Well, actually, no. Just two yards. 
My vision across the field, so all right, good job by the O'Galley defense there. This is where the O'Galley secondary can't get caught sleeping. Somebody was talking about a post play earlier. This is a really good spot for it right here. Jiskin was in motion. Oh, nice blitz. Throws, caught, and O'Galley eats it alive. No gain. That's a good play. Flag, though. We got a flag. We got laundry on the field. Coach Sands is already pointing backwards here. See what Mr. England says here. Personal foul, that's against O'Galley. So it's going to go 15 yards against the Commodores. Hit to the head, they're saying. And Chris Sands is saying, what are you talking about? And that's an unbelievable penalty on O'Galley right there. Unbelievable. 103. And it's first and 10 now at the 34. Yeah. I don't I don't, I don't know where the helmet to helmet occurred. Anthony Demalia Jr. says go Rockledge. So that's a slight loss there. And again, that O'Galley defense both these defenses are giving everything you can ask of them. Brandon Brown out there. I apologize. I can't remember where Brandon's committed to. Gives. And right now, neither. Oh, we got. Oh. We had a little pushing and shoving there. Helmet knocked off. That's Jamarcus Jiscom and Jay Latson. And Latson's got to come out for a play because his helmet came off. I like the fact that the referee didn't throw a flag on that. It was just a good, hard play right there. And that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. And my, oh, my, do we have us a slobber knocker going on here. 17-14 Raiders on top. Satellite has come all the way back to take a 28-24 lead, I'm told. There's his slobber knocker. Good old, a good, old, good old reference to my Jim Ross. If you watched any wrestling in your life, then you certainly know who I'm talking about. Jim Ross, always famous for saying slobber knocker. 12 minutes on the clock. One of these two teams will leave here as district champs. Will it be the Rockledge Raiders or will it be the O'Galley Commodores? Third down and nine for Green and this offense. Hayward in motion. Green drops back, looks, steps up, and he just lets it go. And he was hit while he threw. Incomplete. And they're going to call roughing the passer on. They're going to call roughing. The, that's, a, that's, another, that's a bad call. Bad call. That's going to be 15 yards. Unless they hit him in the hand. The referees are talking about it. They need to pick this flag up. Sands waiting to see what happens here. Personal foul. They're going to call it. 
He doesn't say whether it's roughing the passer or a hit to the head. They say it's a hit to the head, so I, I can't I can't argue the call because I didn't see. Certainly wasn't roughing the passer, but if they hit him in the head, you can't do that. I don't know, but it's 15 yards. Ball now dead on the 50, and the Raiders, for the second time in this drive, are bailed out by an O'Galley 15-yard penalty. Um, well, I'll explain that in a second here, why I don't stream at the Rockledge Stadium. And, yeah, yeah, we had a little issue in the past, me, Coach Younger, and I apologize publicly for it. And I, you know, Coach Younger's entitled to take as long as he wants to forgive me. Second and 15, it was over a, a dumb tweet I put out. 11-18 to go here in the game. But, I, you know, I do it every year, apologize. I'll do it again, you know. My apologies, and I mean it. Second and 15. Throws. Oh, that was nearly picked off underneath. And that's going to be third and 15. <laughs> I hear you, Alex. I hear you. I mean, everybody's tried, right, buddy? Everybody's tried. Everybody's tried to get it turned around. But, you know, you know and, you know, look, I mean, in all honesty, too, you know, Coach Hunger has a wonderful relationship with Steve Wilson and Orville Susong in the Friday Night Locker Room. And would I like to be over there streaming? Absolutely I would. But, uh, you know, it's just, just an issue I've let, uh, you know, take care of itself one day. Coach Claiborne allows us to stream anything else we want there. Third and 15 now. Big play for the Raiders. Green back in trouble. Oh, that's a big time hold. It's called Green. And he throws, and it'll get away. But I think you got to decline this. Fourth and 15 is what it'll be. And immediately he says, no, decline it. And he does. O'Galley is 7-1. and one. Ranked number two in 3S Region 3. Rockledge 5-3, and three, ranked number three in 3S Region 3. Yeah. I appreciate you, Jalen. I really do, man. Hope all is well with you, my friend. Next, uh, make sure you get in touch with me. Let's, let's do a catch up. Fourth and 15, 10, 44 to play. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate you. As they get set to kick here, Larice back deep. Don't even, don't kick it to him. Oh my. Oh, he fair caught it. But that, that's a good fair catch. He fair caught the ball. And that's a mistake by Rockledge. That'll give O'Galley 15 yards of field here. Uh, that's fair catch interference. It hit him hard. And I think once he did it, that's one of those in the mic, you know. Uh, yeah. If you're running down a field, you look down, you get down there. I don't know. I'm not, you know, that's a mistake. So that'll be 15 yards on the fair catch interference. Now, if he had decked him, that would have been one thing, but he, he pulled up and I think realized what he had done there.
an aggressive mistake, we'll call it. Not smart, but definitely an aggressive mistake. All right, first and 10 for the Commodores. 17, 14, 10, 37 to play. Crooms from the gun. He's going to turn and give. What a run. Well, look at that. Derrick Henry-like up the middle for 13. What a run. That's just a great run by Delvonte Williams. First and 10 at the right or at the O'Galley 49. 10 20 to go. Clock running. Crooms with four wide receivers. One in the backfield. He's going to give it again. Why not? And that's five more yards if they give him proper progress. And they do. And it'll be second and five. Check that. Yeah, that was Williams again. Built like Henry. Speaking of Derrick Henry, man, I hope he ends up with my Ravens. Nine forty-five, second and five. Crooms, four wide receivers. Crooms. I don't know. I don't know what that was. That's a bad throw by Jamari. <laughs> <laughs> Listening to uh, the coaches in the box. Can't repeat it, but it was funny. Third and five. <laughs> 9.35 to go. Text me later. If you got my number, I'll tell you. 9.35. I don't know. You might have heard it. Crooms does it again. Does he get it this time? They say, yes, he does. And that's D.L. Hardison with his return. And how can that not be a first down? Really? Nah, I'd ask for a measurement here. Oh, you're very welcome, Alex. Very welcome, my friend. Good to see I think I ran into you tonight. Or saw you anyway. Yeah, they're gonna measure here. And so let's zoom in on this measurement. Let's see how far we can get in here. Seventeen, fourteen. At the top of the screen, Coach Franco at the top of the screen. Inches short of a first down. Okay, okay. So inches short of a first down here, and it's fourth and short. Listen, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to see any shotgun here. I'm sorry, but I don't. Your fourth and inches don't snap this ball four yards backwards. I don't understand that. Okay, they're going to do it. And the back in the backfield is Emmanuel Small, fourth, and I mean maybe six inches. Referee blows the whistle. And I mean, I, I just think he's got to hand this off and let. Small, go get it. And that's what they do. And he does. I'll tell you, if you're a Commodore fan, you hold your breath there. 9-0-8. Jim Williams puts it right out there. Congratulations, Coach Franco. Now beat Rockledge, right? And Rockledge says, well, we'll hold up. Got an injury on the field, and and that's to the quarterback, Jamari Crooms. And they're going to back everybody up here. 9.08 to play. Coming up tomorrow on the Brevard Sports Network, we've got the ECC Championships all day long. 
Satellite and Sun Tree Vieira will be in that. Now, we're also going to be broadcasting all of the Super Bowls coming up. The MFFCC with Rockledge in it, the ACYAA. We've got all the Super Bowls coming up, and we're very excited about that. And uh, also tomorrow, FHSAA regional semifinal volleyball action tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Grooms. Was that Crooms? And warming up on the sidelines is the future at the position. And that's Brody Grantland. I love Grantland. I love watching him play. He's a southpaw. Watched him play in youth football. And Crooms is going to come limping off here. And Grantland's going to have to check in for a play. And the sophomore is going to be thrust into an unbelievable high-pressured situation. We've seen it. We see it all the time, right? I mean, we're watching a sophomore do some pretty remarkable things at Coco, and actually they're not going to bring him in. We're going to get a Wildcat type of formation here. 9.06. Looks like the Wildcat is being run by. Oh, that's a great, uh-oh, up the middle, all the, that should be a face mask too, all the way to the 20. And what a play there by Xavier Larice on a pistol formation turns, and he hands the football off to Emmanuel Small, and Small bursts through the middle of the Rockledge defense and puts the ball right at the Rich's Auto Tech 20. Right there in the red zone. All right, Jim, you got it, buddy. You got it. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. And here we go. First and ten. This is going to be Larice keeping it himself. Larice. Look, I, I, know, I know X is fast. I know he is. But this Rockland's defense, we've said it all night long. You can't go east and west on them. You just saw... What Emmanuel Small did, north-south, north-south, east-west, you're going to lose yards. First, second, and ten now. Small back in. What a game we've got here with 7.52 to go. 17, 14. Rockledge on top looking to capture a district championship tonight. The Commodores looking to snap a 15-year losing streak. Whistles. And a timeout to O'Galley here. I think if you're O'Galley here, you need six. Three is nice to tie it, but you need six. Traven Green's a playmaker, and your quarterback's banged up. You got to find a way to get into the end zone. Got to find a way. See where I don't see Crooms. Is he down there? Where is he? Might be. Uh, might be in the middle of that huddle. I like that Wildcat with uh, Larice back there. You just got to take it north and south. Larice is out, so it could be that Crooms is back in. He is not. Jay Latson is going to run the quarterback position here. Latson is one heck of an athlete. He's going to have Latavius Welch to his right. Jay Latson looks. Oh, he's in trouble. Latson shakes it off, gets outside, going to tuck it and cut back. And nice play. Nice play by Jay. Jay was. And that's going to come back because of a hold. But that's just a good play by Jay there to get out of trouble. But there you see the laundry laying at the 31. And this is undoubtedly coming back. And it'll be second and 20. Again, if you're just joining us, the rules have changed this year in high school football. It's not a spot foul anymore. It's a 10-yard penalty. And Redman Thompson saying, come on, man, pick it up. 
And they do. And they do pick it up. <laughs> so, no flag. Picked up. Second down. Third down. And five now for O'Galley and this offense. Six fifty-six to play in the game. Play action throws. Did he catch it? Oh, out of bounds. He caught it, but he was out of bounds. That's a good throw and a catch. I thought he got one in, it looked like to me. I'm watching the replay. He got a foot in unless he dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. That's what it was. He got his feet in, but he dropped the ball. He could not keep control of the ball to the ground. And now it's fourth and five and decision time for Coach Chris Sands and the Commodores. He catches that ball, and that's a touchdown. What a play. Good call by the official. <laughs> if you're Rockledge, you're holding your breath. If you're O'Galley, you're, what are you doing here? They've already faked the punt at their own 21-yard line tonight. Are they going to go for this and go for the win here? And that's exactly what they're doing. Jay Latson at quarterback. Uh, the uh, Latavius Welch to his right. Four wide receivers, doubles, split equally to each side. Fourth and five. Here we go. Larissa in motion. They give the follow. He cuts back inside, still on his feet, pulls his jersey down to the one-yard line. What a call. What a run. And it's first, oh, they caught a hold. They already called the hold. That's terrible. 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 Watch the play the whole way. Fourth and 15. And the referees in the stands voice their approval at that call, and I agree. This is fourth and 15, and Latson's going to have to do it again. I, I mean, that's, that, that, that was a great play call. Latson looks. He throws. He just throws it up, and that is intercepted in the end zone. If he holds on, he does not. He says, yes, he does. So the ball come out to the 20-yard line. It's actually not bad. It gives them five yards. And the Commodores hold, or the Rockledge Raiders hold with 6.32 to play. Flags. And, I, and, and you just hate to see officials decide games. You just do. Because it wasn't a hold, that's how. He turned him and dropped him to the ground. He didn't grab him. I'm standing right here looking at it. Green now with an opportunity to add more. The assumption on that is that you grabbed him on the inside of the jersey and drove him. That didn't happen. And, and Rockledge now with not one, not two, not three, but four great backs in that backfield that they can turn to. And O'Galley's got to be careful here because any number of those backs from agent, the, you know, the new agent zero, Jalen Hayward here, to Jamarcus Jiscom, I mean, you give them the ball and they can turn it up. My whole thing is I want to see the kids decide this. That's my thing. Second and eight. I mean, you can disagree with me all night long. I want to see the kids decide the game. The give, nice give, nice run, cut back inside. It's just a good run to get back inside. And 
and that'll be third down and about four now. So a big stop here. And we've got an injured Raider, and that's not good. It's zero down. And that's AP. That's Jalen Hayward, and you don't want to see that. He's up, walking off under his own power. This is going to be the water break, 5-29. Like I've already said that, I, you know, the MCOA, they do a terrific job. and You know, but a couple of the flags tonight I, I just didn't agree with. Third and five. That's a great crew. I mean, it really is. Third down is huge here. O'Galley needs to stop. The Raiders get a first down. They could deflate that O'Galley defense. Green wants it. He's got it. Looks to throw. Does. Great coverage. Incomplete. Nearly with a one-handed catch. That's just, that's just good coverage. It's a good route by Lorenzo Bell on the coverage over there. Was a, uh, A.J. Forehand. Forehand. And now Rockledge goes three and out. They got a punt here. You can't go for this. Wasn't that third down? Yeah, here comes the punt team. Fourth and five. So the Raiders are unable to pick up a critical first down here. Five, 16 to play. And Larice will stand at his own. 46. Need a big punt here. Young man is certainly capable of it. No wind at the moment. Need a good snap. Long count to try to draw the Commodores off. Great snap. And a great punt. What a punt. What a punt. Rockledge got exactly what they needed from their special teams. There's Jerry Valdez with a beautiful punt. 50 yards. What a punt. The time, 5.05 to play. One could say this is the Commodore's last ditch effort here. And is... Crooms, no, it's Latson back at quarterback. So Crooms doesn't look as though he's going to return. I'll go down to Aaron Andrews here in a minute. 5-0-5. Five, oh, five. First and 10. Latson. That's that wide receiver screen. Takes too long to develop. It's the third time tonight they've run it, and the third time the Rockledge Raiders have absolutely disposed of it. Damari Jenkins first on the scene there. Nice play by Damari also in there. Lorenzo Bell Jr. Aaron Andrews right now. Her uh, her signal's not working, so we're just going to say that uh, <laughs> just going to say Crooms is not returning. <laughs> 431. Second down and eight. Doubles, that means wide receivers split equally to each side. Raiders caught in between defenses, cut back. Great run inside. What a cutback that time by Latavius Welch. And Welch caught the Raiders in a shift. They were confused in coverage, didn't see the doubles. The two outside wide receivers on the far right weren't really covered up. They went to go get them. Latson snapped the ball. Handed it to Welch, and Welch picks up a first down. Ball's out, Latson throws, caught. Nice pitch and catch there. D.L. Hardison, did he catch it or drop it? He drops it. Second and ten. Nine. 
need a little bit. If if you're Rockledge, you definitely got to work on that clock management if you get the ball back here. Four minutes to go. Welch, oh, that's big boy football right there. Absolute big boy football. And they both were playing it. Number 50 right there from the Rockledge Raiders. Amir Parker greeted. Williams in the hole, and that was a great collision. Third down, obvious four down territory. Third and six, Latson with Welch next to him. Turns, gives, cuts back, That's cuts back again. That's a shifty little move there. That's gonna bring up fourth and short. So it's gonna be fourth and three for O'Galley. Welch with a good run there. If he doesn't cut back, that's no gain. And the Raiders defense made a good, did a good job that time of not just arm tackling, but make sure they brought him down. And we're going to get a timeout on the field. Catch your breath. I want to thank Justin. 41 nothing Heritage over Harmony. About where we thought that would be tonight. And we want to thank Heritage, by the way. They accommodated us tonight. We, we've had a, we got a couple of guys missing tonight. And that was supposed to be another game that was on the docket for us tonight, but uh, because of our manpower shortage, we weren't able to get there, so we've worked out a deal with them. Coming in the playoffs with Justin, thank you, and thank the Booster Club uh, for working that out with us tonight. 3.03 to go, 17-14, Rockledge on top. Commodore's looking to snap a 15-year losing streak to the Raiders. The Raiders looking to run their Brevard County record since 2017 to 37 and seven. They're in the wrong formation. They're in the wrong formation and they're gonna call another timeout. No, they're not. Okay, so they get in the right formation. Makai Biggs, fourth and short give. Oh no, he's gotta run with it. Oh, he's gonna get it. What a first down! Pick up by Terrell Robinson. Wow. Everybody playing a little quarterback. Was that Robinson or Latson? That was Latson. My apologies. That was Latson that time. Thought it was Robinson. But Latson with a big move in the backfield to avoid the Raider sacker. First and 10 at the 29. Tick tock, tick tock. 2.42 to play. Latson gives, cuts outside. Oh, my goodness. That's 15 yards. He dragged him down and made no apologies about it by his face mask. And that'll be a 15-yard penalty. And that'll put the football at the 15-yard line. First and 10 for the Commodores at the 15. J5, absolutely a great run there. And a big penalty there. I mean, if you're going to grab a face mask and tackle him by it, might as well. <laughs> First and 10 at the 15 for Latson and company. Latson began his high school journey at Holy Trinity. Transferred over here. Split time with Crooms at quarterback a little bit last season before Crooms won the job. Latson has moved into an athletic position here. And then you see to have the ability to have J5 back there taking snaps is tremendous for Coach Chris Sands. Lats in first and 10. Oh, he is drilled, but he hangs on to the football. And that is an absolutely huge, huge sack for or, uh, Damari Jenkins. That's his second of the night and the Raiders fifth. Five sacks on the night for the Rockledge Raiders. Boost their season total to 23. That's going to be second and 15 now. 157 to go. The thing you can't do here is take a sack. You just can't take another one. The ball's at the 19. It'd be a 29, 36-yard field goal from here. Latson 
Steps up, throws, wide open in the flat, cuts back. Still on his feet. Is he in? Touchdown! Oh, golly! Touchdown, Commodores! Terrell Robinson, wide open on the flat. Latchin hits him, and he fights his way into the end zone. What a play. And the Commodore crowd goes crazy. Who was that, Robinson? Yep, that's what I thought. The all-important extra point. This puts them up by four, and it would force the Raiders to need a touchdown. The snap. Oh, bad snap. Terrible. Terrible. And it's going to be the Rockledge is now in a position to tie, but the Commodores have taken a lead with a late touchdown pass. Jay Latson to Terrell Robinson. I think you needed that. Boy, that leaves the door wide open. And now that Oak Alley defense, as great as it's been all year, Needs to be even greater. With there's your there's your situation right there. 97 seconds to play in this football game. We got 521 people watching this thing. Four, one thirty-seven, and they need a. I tell you what, I know you don't. You, you've already, you pooched it to Jamarcus Jiskum once tonight, right? And they're going to switch sides over here. Jiskum's going to take the left. Jiskum with a kick return touchdown tonight. My goodness, everything in play here. They're going to kick it to him again. Jiskum at the twenty. Cuts back. And Jiskum showing his speed, and he is brought down. That's a big time stop because Jiskum was sneaking outside. Now it's up to the senior, Traven Green. What can he do? Ken Green. One timeout for the Commodores. Two. I believe for Rockledge. They don't keep the timeouts on the board, and I apologize. I'm by myself, so I didn't have an opportunity to keep them on the score sheet. So I don't know the timeout situation completely. 130, exactly 90 seconds to play. First and 10 for Green and the Raiders. Green throws, caught. Got to keep him in bounds. Does he get out? The referee, look at everybody winding their arms. And they do. They do keep him in. 117 to play. I said what? 18, 15, 18, 12, something in that neighborhood tonight. Second and five. Down at distance, really no matter right now. Green under pressure. He steps up. He's got to get out of bounds. Green, nice smart play there. Green out of bounds at the 50. I would say he probably needs to get for the Raiders to have a shot. The wind is blowing from left to right. I would say he would probably need to get at least to the 20 to have a shot at a field goal attempt here. We've already seen a 31-yarder tonight. That is huge to get out of bounds and stop the clock. 55 seconds to play. 20 to 17, O'Galley on top. Coming up, the Uberzati post game show, 45 minutes after this one's over. Green, all kinds of time. 
throws, and he throws it away. Wait a minute, is he outside the pocket? There's a receiver in the area, though, so no intentional grounding. The receiver in the area was Chase Vickers. Second and 10, 49 seconds to play. O'Galley rushing just three, eight men back, standing at the 25. Actually, they come up now. You got Lloris back there. The Raiders. O'Galley looking to snap that 15-year losing streak. Second and 10 and win a district championship. Green in trouble. He's got to get rid of it again. Throws. Incomplete. Third and 10. 41 seconds to play. We'll say hello to my buddy Virgil Marshall Swipe. Saw Jalen Mitchell in earlier. 41 seconds. Rockledge, if they don't get this win, they're in a real pickle come next week. We'll talk about that on the postgame show tonight. Third and 10. They need a first down and a lot more here. Green looking. He spreads, runs to his left, throws, intercepted. Larice with the pick, and the O'Galley Commodores. Xavier Larice picks it off, and that'll end it. The O'Galley Commodores will win the district championship and beat the Raiders for the first time since 2008. Wow, what a game. What a football game. Thirty seconds, nothing but a knee needed. Whatever you do, do not call the University of Miami. <laughs> First and ten. 30 seconds, and that'll do it. That's the final play. And Chris H Sands with his hands on his head now pointing. And for the O'Galley Commodores, they have defeated the Rockledge Raiders for the first time since 2008. And they are your 3S district champions. And there it is. Congratulations to the O'Galley Commodores. Little bit of dancing going on. Now, we don't normally do post-game interviews. Hey, take care, man. Thank you. We don't normally do post-game interviews. But I'm going to try and sneak down and grab one. I'll tell you what. What a football game this was tonight. It was everything. It promised to be a great, great job uh, by both of these teams tonight. This was a defensive battle. And uh, in the end, it was the O'Galley Commodores uh, who stopped those Rockledge Raiders there on that final possession. The Raiders ran three plays in under a minute. Didn't really take any time off the clock. Gave the ball back to O'Galley and let the Commodores do what they do so well. And that's run the football. And then Jamari Crooms goes down and Jay Latson steps up. How about the play of Jay Latson coming in off the bench tonight? So that'll wrap it up tonight. Once again, your final score, the O'Galley Commodores capture a district championship and they defeat the Rockledge Raiders, something you have not heard since 2008. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. We want to thank all of our sponsors. I want to thank Athletic Director Todd O's. Uh, we'll see you in about 45 minutes on the Uberzotti post game show. I'm Alan Slaughter Zinsky. Once again, your final score. Take a picture of it. O'Galley 20, Rockledge 17. Have a great night, everybody.